Okay, so today we are doing a, a instructional video on how to paint the latte cup blanks. Um, these are cool for fall. If you like uh, a little pumpkin spice, you can get one of these and paint it up yourself. These are $5 until the end of August. And right now, um, they're, they're, we have a few of them in the shop and then the others you can order online on our website at www.abstractdistractionsky.com and get yours for five bucks. But today I'm gonna to show you how to paint one just to help give you a little uh, guidance and instruction on where things go. What I did to speed things along is I went ahead and painted the bottom part of this orange and the middle part orange. And I'll show you where you can mark those off here in just a second. And um, left the rest of it primed. Uh, these are the colors that you're gonna use. We've got orange and territorial beige, sunkissed peach and vanilla. And all of these colors can be found at Walmart or Michaels, either one. And the brushes you're gonna need, I have my big brush that I use for like everything. They can also, you can also find those at Walmart like that. I think you get two in a pack for probably about four bucks, I think. And then the other brushes, if I were you, I would just go to Walmart or Michaels. They have these at both places and they are blue handled and they have grippers on them. And if you buy a pack of them, you'll have every size brush that you need the skinny ones, the flat ones, the chiseled ones, the bigger ones, every one that you need for anything that you do when you paint through one of our instructional videos. So we're gonna stop the camera for just a second and flip things around so you can see what's going on down here as I paint. And you can buy your little latte $5 blank and paint along with us and have one for yourself. Okay, so what I did before we got the video going was I got some blue painter's tape out at Walmart and I taped off at the top of this little ledge and this, this side, I put the tape to where it went right edge to edge with that cutout. And then I put a piece of tape across the top, painted that orange, and then I put another piece of tape here at the bottom of this cutout part that looks like the cuff that goes around your coffee cups. And once I got the tape on there and painted that, just peel the tape off and you got a decent clean edge there. Now, if you want, once your orange is dry, you can tape over that orange edge if you want to, and you don't need to press very hard or anything, and you can paint your cuff. Now, I usually just freehand it, but if you want a really clean edge and painting a straight line makes you nervous, just go ahead and get you some blue painter's tape and that will take care of it. If you pull your blue painter's tape up when your paint is still wet, it might pull some of your paint up, and if that happens, you can just go back and touch it up, no big deal. So I've got my three colors here and I'll go ahead and put a little bit of orange in here too, just in case we have to do any touching up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the top part of this first with the vanilla. That way it can dry while we're doing something down here. So I, with my big brush, I'm just gonna go back and forth across the middle of this and the top. And down here on the bottom, it's okay if you get a little bit of this on that line because I'm going to show you a neat little trick to make it look like some whipped cream on the top there. So make sure you put a good solid coat of that vanilla on the whole entire thing. Once you get it all covered, I like to go back and forth all the way across it to, just to kind of make it look a little more even and uniform. Um, make sure you get your edges. And they don't have to be perfect, just kind of cover them up a little bit with whatever paint you got in your brush. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. I don't waste a whole lot of time on edges, just enough to kind of make them look like they're halfway covered. up in that little curly cue of that ice cream, that little Dairy Queen cue up there it is a little tough, but if you take a second. Okay, now I'm gonna throw my big brush in my cup and let it hang out. If you get a set of brushes, try to find one that has, um, that is flat like this and kind of squared off. I'm gonna show you a neat little trick on how to make the bottom of that Cool Whip or whipped cream, whatever that is. Um, look a little 
a little more like the real deal. So I'm gonna put some of that vanilla on my brush and I'm just gonna go here where this little bump is and I'm just gonna turn my brush like that. I'm just gonna push it down and then turn it. Push it down and turn it. You may have to load up and get you some more paint. You want it to ride down over that orange just a little bit. That was almost too much paint on that one, but that's okay. I'll smooth it out. Just push it down and give it a little turn. And it makes like a little circular edge on there. So you can get that whole whipped cream look going on. You can also just put your brush down and just kind of give it a little wave across there and that works too. So while that's drying, I'm gonna let that hang out up there. And down here, I'm going to paint this part, the cuff that goes around your hot cup to keep you from burning your hands. I'm gonna paint that territorial beige. I kinda of like this color because it's, it's a little lighter than brown, but a little darker than beige. So I'm just gonna give that a real quick coat. And this don't have to be too fancy because cardboard looks kinda of streaky anyway. But I'm gonna put a pretty decent coat of that on there. And it's okay if it's blotchy because we'll come back and hit it one more time. You can leave your tape on there until it dries really good. And then let that just kind of hang out there and dry. Okay, now, while that top is drying and while the cuff is drying, I'm gonna get a little bit of black paint I didn't tell you to get black earlier, but I always have black and white on hand for lots of things. So if you go just if you're gonna get some paint, just go ahead and get a big old bottle of black, a big old bottle of white, you'll use it. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my black, and with my skinny brush, I'm just gonna mix that up and get it to about the consistency of ink. You don't want it to be so watered down that it's like water. You want it about like the consistency of a melted milkshake or um like real thin gravy or something like that. You don't want it super, super thin. Now, once you get that mixed up, wipe your brush off, because it still holds a lot of water. I'm gonna take this black, and with the skinniest brush I got, I'm just going to go ahead and lift that tape up, and I'm gonna pull down, and then dot, dot, and then load my brush again, pull down, and then dot, dot, and you're making just a neat little border. Pull across, and dot, dot, pull across, dot, dot, and you're just gonna make little short lines. A lot of people are like, I can't paint a straight line. Well, if you can get a little bit of a straight line, a short straight line, and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, you can do the um, line, dot, dot, line, dot, dot, and kind of give yourself a little bit of a border. I'm gonna take that tape off and I'm just gonna pull it down a little and dot it and pull this one down a little and dot it and then let that sit there for a minute. Okay. And you give the top part a little time to dry and the, and the cuff of your cup a little time to dry. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go around the edge of this top part kind of the same way I did down here at the bottom. So I'm going to take that black and I'm just going to make some short lines and two dots. Short lines and two dots. Short line and two dots. And just create that edge around that whipped cream. Now you don't have to do this. You can leave that off if you want or if you have a different way of doing yours that you like to do, that's fine. I just think this gives it a kind of neat little edge around it. The trick to doing lines like this is to get your um, paint the right consistency. And what I mean by that is to um, get it to where it's not too thin and it's not too thick. Now up here at the top, I'm just going to go ahead and bring a longer line just to kind of accentuate that little scoop of ice cream there. And I'm going to go down and bring it back right there to get that tip in there all together. Now 
after you've played with these a little bit, you start getting a little routine that you like to do with your own little um, edges and things. Got a little bit of brown paint right there. I'll cover that up. All right, now inside, I'm going to take some of that territorial beige that we use down here on the cuff. And you don't have to thin that out if you don't want to. It can go on there thick. And I'm just going to make some random parentheses style marks going in different directions. All around here. And that's going to create that whole fluffiness in your pool whip. Wrong color. I get in a hurry and sometimes I put the wrong color in it. And up here on the tip, I'm just going to come around that edge a little bit. Maybe it needs one right here. Just kind of stop and look at it a little bit and see where you think you might need one or two. Okay. So, I'm going to let that hang out and dry. Now, down here on the cuff, I'm going to do the same black, white, I mean, the same line and dot thing that I did around the edges of the cup. And I move pretty fast. You can take your time and go as slow as you need to. But making a straight line, the trick is to let your hand rest on whatever you're painting and then lay the brush down and just drag it and give it, let it, let the brush kind of do the dirty work. little one up there but it's okay this one's going as a gift anyhow so they're not going to care what i do to it they're just going to be glad to get one so once you go around your edge with that same kind of border all right now just to kind of um break up the monotony here i like to put some polka dots in here somewhere so I'm gonna take a smaller flat brush and it can be chiseled at the top like this one is or it can be straight across, either one is fine. I'm gonna take some of that sun-kissed peach which is kind of a real pale, pasty, peachy color. And what I like to do with this to make polka dots, I'm gonna show you guys the secret trick to making a polka dot. Now, when you make a polka dot, you need to make sure that if, you're, if what you're painting is laying flat, your brush needs to be perpendicular to that, meaning that it needs to be at a 90 degree angle you get some paint on your brush, you don't want tons of it, just enough, and you hold that brush down there flat and press down until the bristles go flat down against whatever you're painting. And then you're gonna take it and you're just gonna twist it around into, until the brushes come back around full circle and you've got a polka dot. You can fill in the middles a little bit because there might be a little splotchy spot right there in the middle, but it makes a polka dot. Let me show you that again. You press down. Now you're not going to move your wrist. You're going to move. You're going to let. You're just going to twist the brush in between your fingers. I'm going to twist it around, and then I'm just going to spread that paint out just a little bit. Now, when you're doing dots, you want to stagger them. What I usually do is I make like a line of them across, like this, and then I look for a triangle, a way to make a triangle, and then that's where the next dot will go. So see, I've got my triangle right there. Now I'm gonna look at these two and make another triangle down here using that dot. You just wanna stagger them. I had a lady tell me one time that she thought it looked like dice, like the number five on dice. That works too. If you think about how the dots are laid out on, on the number five side of, of a die, then you can Kind of given position and they don't have to all be exactly the same size they don't have to be perfectly spaced apart that's the cool thing about this so up here i'm going to just stagger them a little bit if you run into your cool whip up at the top it's okay no big deal i'm not even making these as big as the ones down there because my space is a little a little shorter up here okay so now your cup has got some cute little dots on it I would maybe get like a paper plate or a piece of paper or something and practice on it first. Just remember, you gotta keep your brush perpendicular to whatever you're painting and just twist it between your fingers. You don't wanna do this. You just wanna twist your fingers around. 
practice it a few times. It gets easier and easier the more you do it. Okay, so now I'm gonna put some lettering in here. Um, this one's going to the main cut because my daughter works down there. So I wanted to um, give them some kind of fall something to hang up that's related to coffee. So I'm gonna take my black paint and make sure it's kind of inky, like the consistency of ink. Now, when you're doing letters, letters are hard. And if it makes you feel better to pencil your letters on and then go over them with paint, by all means do it. If it makes you feel more comfortable to use a paint marker, then use a paint marker. I, I had to get really brave when I started doing letters and I just practiced and practiced and practiced. And you'll start finding little tricks to help you make it easier. One of the biggest things that I will tell people to do is get the skinniest brush you can find and make sure that the bristles are kind of long, but not so long that it's, you know, big, super long bris bristles. You just want it, you know, about as long as your fingernail is wide. And then get your paint the consistency of ink. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write like I would with a pen, but I'm gonna split my letters up into sections. I'm not gonna try to do a whole letter at once, but if you put your hand down and let your hand rest on whatever you're painting, and just treat that paintbrush like an ink pen. It's not nearly as hard. It takes a little practice. And just take your letters one little section at a time. I'm gonna show you how to do some neat little tricks here in just a second. And just write in cursive. Now, once you write in cursive and get your own handwriting on there, um, and anywhere you have a curve, you can take that and fatten it up a little bit. Take your curves and fatten them up a little. I would wait until everything's dry before you start doing your lettering because you'll stick your hand in something wet and smear it. Lord knows I've done that a gazillion times. And anything that's going down, fatten it up. Anything, like when you're, when, when you are um, when you're writing, pick one side and whatever direction that's going. And you like I fatten this one up. So the other one, the other line in that letter that's going the same direction, I'm gonna fatten that one up too. And try to get it where it's not wet. I'm gonna fatten up the left side of some of these. Usually when I have a paint party going on, sometimes people will stand around and just watch me do letters and they're like, I could watch you do that all day. It used to make me nervous, but now I just kind of go with it. It's no big deal. And don't be afraid if you mess it up, it's okay. It's just paint. You can always wipe it off with a wet paper towel and paint over it and try again. No big deal. I've messed up many, 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 many things. And I've only had to totally repaint something one time or two, maybe. I'm not telling. But it's not too hard. Once you practice and play with it a little bit, it gets easier to do. Okay, now the only other thing that I would think that this probably needs is down here on my polka dots. I just want to fancy them up, make them pop a little bit. So I'm going to put just a skinny little black line, like a parenthesis, like one side of a parenthesis, on one side of every dot. I'm going to go with the left. And if you want to get real fancy, you can do a parenthesis and two dots. That is kind of cute. It just kind of makes your dots pop a little bit. Okay. 
tease that dot. Get the whole mother is here. Some of these are still wet. I would wait until everything's dry before you do this, but for time's sake, I'm trying to get this done so we can get it all in one video. Okay, and it's done. Now, on these, I have also bought some glitter paint that goes on kind of white, but it dries clear and leaves the glitter on there. And you put that up here in the Cool Whip, it looks really cute. And if you put a little bit on your polka dots, it looks really cute too. When you get ready to put your handle on these, the best place to drill it is either right up here in the top of your Cool Whip or right here on the corners of your cuff. Either one of those will work but I usually try to do it down here on the cuff or maybe even right here. Just make sure that they're exactly even apart. Wherever you put them, it's gonna be just fine, okay? So come down to Abstract, get yourself a blank latte cup and start painting.